Hello, everyone. What an honor and privilege it is to be joining you in beautiful Seoul. My name is Zach Concer. I live in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, and I'm the cloud tech lead at Riot Games. I'm here today to talk a little bit about our incredible cloud transformation journey and how AWS helped us along the way. It's been a long journey, but not nearly as long as the 15-hour flight from Toronto. I'm going to speak a bit about how it all started, how our partnership with AWS developed, some of the challenges we faced along the way, but most importantly, how AWS helps Riot power fan and player experiences today. Speaking of fan experiences, is anyone here excited for Worlds? Very exciting times, very hype. Uh, I wish I could stay and enjoy it with uh, all of you that are attending and the rest of the fans. Let's start at the beginning, long before my time at Riot began. Back when League started in 2006, it was completely reliant on Colo data centers, which we built and operated because we had very few trusted partners in the space. Um, the cloud or managed services was used for some things along the way, but the cloud as we refer to it today simply didn't exist. The League environment was super custom, a monolithic platform and a custom game server engine that we built in-house. We had challenges running the game servers in a virtualized environment on our own metal. It seemed a far stretch to get from where we were to running on a container orchestration platform or even just an EC2 instance. The Colo approach worked for some time, and while operating data centers has its challenges, after a decade, we weren't too bad at it. But in 2017, we saw the writing on the wall. We needed to modernize League if we wanted to continue to provide great player and fan experiences. We had tens of millions of very loyal players by that time. We didn't want to risk losing them. There were some pretty big plans in the future works as well, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Bottom line, the industry was changing, and cloud providers were quickly proving their worth across all facets of technology, delivering scale, global reach, and invaluable platform capabilities all with built-in automation, deployable via templates and APIs, it's just impossible for us to keep up with. Every journey has to start somewhere. We were already running some auxiliary workloads and supporting services on AWS. It was a familiar environment to some of our engineers, and by 2018, AWS was rapidly growing in popularity. There wasn't much of a cloud strategy at this point. It was kind of the Wild West. There were some teams that had accounts. Uh, nothing was centrally managed. There wasn't any you know, central management at all. That's a long topic for another day and maybe another talk. Production infrastructure at this time was still run out of the data centers. But we knew we needed to take some small steps to embrace the change we were seeing all around us. Like I had mentioned before, League is built on its own custom game engine and a monolithic platform. Attempting to completely redesign for cloud native at this point was just not feasible. So let's start small, get some game servers up and running on AWS. AWS then became a small part of our tech stack, a, an extension of the data center where we could deploy additional burst capacity if we needed it, or a few game servers into a region where we didn't have a presence. By 2019, we were able to run our internal services platform, our cluster two, on AWS as well. This was more of a lift and shift, uh, but we were able to realize some of the benefits of cloud, like deploying services in additional regions quickly and being able to scale the compute behind that platform within hours instead of weeks or months. Some might think, not where I expected Riot Games to be in 2019, and that's fair, but it's a start. And in four short years, we've come a long way. We knew modernizing League for our players was critical to our mission and at the very core of our values, player experience first. It was now a decade plus old game that had a very loyal player base we wanted players and fans to know that we were investing in the future as they've invested their time and money with us. 
we started quickly looking at options and settled on shifting our strategy to all in on cloud. This decision was made for a multitude of reasons. But to summarize quickly, operating data centers is no easy feat. And there is no way we can keep up with the economies of scale that the major cloud providers were able to offer. That meant we agreed we would migrate League to the AWS cloud to take full advantage of all the services offered. In addition, we decided all new things would be cloud first by default. This was obviously a major shift for us, so choosing the right cloud provider was going to be crucial. And at this point, we had already had a bit of experience with AWS. To modernize League and deliver on our promise to players worldwide, we turned to AWS, who shares a common obsession with customer experience. In our case, Riot was founded to develop, publish, and support the most player-focused games in the world. So we started this journey for League in 2018, but things started to get a little more interesting in, later on in 2019. Let me tell you a quick story of the beginning of my journey with Riot. For about four years prior to joining Riot Games in October 2019, I was working as a consultant for a high-end consultancy that specialized in tra cloud transformation for highly regulated environments, mostly banks and telecommunication companies. I was, I was dealing a lot with traditional architectures and a lot of risk management spreadsheets, like spreadsheet-driven development as a thing, right? Very exciting stuff. So I flew down to Santa Monica for my first day. So many people were on campus. The environment was very exciting. Uh, and I came to find out it was L10. The League 10-year anniversary celebration was on my very first day at Riot. Uh, after a few hours meeting my team, getting settled in, a few of us head down to the quad, um, and we sat down to witness this. quite a moment, uh, one I'll always remember. It still gives me goosebumps, and if I have a bad day at work, I go back and watch that. We were called Riot Games. Up until this point, there was only one Riot game. I'm sure some of you remember the memes. It took us a while to get the memo, but we got it done. The games we now know as TFT, Wild Rift, Legends of Runeterra, and my personal favorite, Valorant. Things were about to get really interesting for our infrastructure and operations teams. Remember, we decided that anything new was going to be cloud first, and that meant launching Valorant and TFT in AWS over the data centers. That decision had some immediate benefits. The platform I mentioned earlier, the R Cluster 2, the one we were able to lift and shift into the cloud, enabled us to launch Valorant with far less customizations and a little more standardization. While the platform itself wasn't perfect, we were able to deploy quickly and fail fast if we needed to without the risk of 40 data centers worth of unused servers to worry about if things didn't work out. While modernizing and migrating League was important to the journey, it turns out that launching Valorant, which is now a game with tens of millions of players, would actually be our first opportunity to work with AWS team on a massive product launch. We got to experience their customer obsession firsthand. And with the help of AWS, Valorant was a massive success. So where does that bring us? We've put the S in games and had some additional new cloud native capabilities built alongside it, which would eventually help support future launches and modernizing League of Legends. AWS was providing a lot of value in a short time, but that's not all that was happening. We can't forget about esports, and I think Riot takes our role in the esports universe pretty seriously. With over 1,000 professional players, 100 professional teams in 12 regions and nine global tournaments, and growing at a rapid pace in both opportunities to compete and fan base. And this was all happening during the global pandemic, when live events were nearly impossible and there wasn't much happening at the office. Another problem creating another opportunity. How can AWS help Riot Esports power remote broadcasting centers? 
they answered the call again. And I recommend you check out a talk by James Wild at last year's reInvent about Project Striker. Um, and I'll, I'll post a link to that online. Riot has become a bit of a pop culture obsession, seen in fashion, sports, TV, music. Uh, oh, and Arcane was pretty cool. Does anybody want to see season two? Next year. <laughs> now, that's all great and fun, but you might be thinking, what does all this have to do with cloud transformation and technology? We needed a partner who could support our growth and ambitions across the board, more than just a cloud infrastructure provider, and one that had now proven our values align. In July 2022, Riot officially announced that we were going all in on AWS focused on powering Riot's infrastructure, including our new global content factories that publish esports, music production, analytics, statistics, and animation. We would also use AWS to power the build out of Riot's cloud-first production facilities based in Dublin, APAC, and Seattle. Those are those remote broadcast centers I was talking about. What did that moment actually mean for Riot? What are some areas where we've seen engagement beyond the typical vendor-customer relationship? We get access to the latest infrastructure technologies without having to purchase hardware, build labs, or spend valuable engineering time on complex proof of concepts. These technologies are quickly rolled out globally in a standard way. We don't have to worry about creating divergent architectures region to region. AWS is collaborative with the rollout of new regions, local zones, and outpost availability. So we can properly plan and execute expansion into new locales. We get to partner with AWS on the roadmap for our mission-critical services, so we know what's coming, and we can inform AWS product teams of emerging requirements or features that we critically need. This support even extends beyond technology, like creating new fan experiences at live events. If you're planning to attend Worlds, I would recommend you check out the AWS Game Day LOL Esports Edition. That'll be a lot of fun. We also receive strategic support for large projects, like our global data center, DCOM. So we've made the decision to go all in on AWS. And everybody ex is excited, contracts are signed, execs are high-fiving, life is good, right? You might recall earlier in the talk, I referred to all the legacy tech in the data centers. And in 2020, it was still there. Thousands of microservices across 14 regions, along with our fair share of tech debt. That's not quite all in. We made a three-year plan to migrate each data center to AWS. This was an incredibly complex project, as the Riot data centers were operating live games for many millions of players. The last thing we wanted to do was create, was cause player pain along the way at all. Not only did we plan to rebuild the infrastructure services, we needed to test and migrate without causing excessive downtime. This was another area where AWS stepped up in a big way. AWS Professional Services was able to step in and help when we needed them and introduced us to Slalom a strategic partner to help with planning and execution. Our AWS account team was always available and willing to help in every aspect of the project. Special shout out to our technical account managers, Randy and Hadrian, who would spend entire nights making sure that things went smoothly. And if they didn't, they would assist with troubleshooting and escalation. This year, through a lot of hard work, late nights, support escalations, incident bridges, war rooms, and with way too many people to thank, We've completed that three-year mission. Now I can confidently say that we are all in. But what does that mean for us, and what areas are we seeing significant improvement across our um, tech stack? Through the availability of a multitude of instance types and sizes, different compute backends, we can load test and fine tune more frequently, making sure players are getting the optimal experience while ensuring we are running on an efficient resource footprint. We can spend more time engineering, ensuring performance is at its peak. And we are using technology in a sustainable way. Infrastructure is consistent and reliable, taking some of the burden off of our operations teams. Rapid auto scaling and auto healing gives us a margin of error with capacity projections. We spend less time dealing with servers and logistics and more time creating new experiences. Finally, we get to realize the benefits of global economies of scale. To put it simply, we can reach more players where they are, allowing AWS to do the heavy lifting. As important as the AWS partnership has been for Riot, 
let's talk quickly about what's most important. What does it mean for our players and fans? We've been able to expand our reach through the availability of new regions, local zones, and supported outpost locations, giving players more options and less latency. We can enter these areas of the market on a much reduced timeline, and we have the ability to automate most of the platform using infrastructure as code tools, something that's very difficult in your own data center. Our next-gen born in AWS microservices platform has given us the ability to auto-scale game server and, perform and platform services, providing additional stability, resilience, and smoother game launches. We've even brought new insights and experiences to esports broadcasts. Uh, esports stats by AWS, like you see in other live sporting events, AWS Global Power Rankings, and Pick'em powered by AWS that allows fans to compete in live bracket challenges. Today, a wide array of AWS products powers the core of player and fan experiences at Riot. Microservices, game server platforms, and build farms all standardized on EKS, machine learning and analytics, databases and storage, esports broadcasting from remote broadcast centers, and the list goes on. If you want to learn more about Riot's specific design and implementation of EKS and how AWS helped Valorant reach more players at launch, um, join my breakout session later today. Uh, it's going to be right here. We've come a long way over the last five years, and AWS has been a big part of that journey. As we continue to build towards our future, Riot finally has its technology partner that has a proven obsession for their customers, the same as we'll always have for our players and fans. It's been really enjoyable to reflect on everything I've gotten to be a part of over the last four years at Riot and share it with all of you. Um, I'm going to post a, a blog on LinkedIn with some of the links I was mentioning, so if you want to check that out, you can connect with me there. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your time today. Good luck. Have fun.